Do you want to end us? <laughs> <laughs> if we have any regrets or not? Tons. <laughs> we got a serious topic to talk about. It's not that serious, but it kind of is. This video is about why we got married so young, some tips and tricks of if you do get married really young, what you can do to make it a good, long lasting marriage. So I was looking up the other day, they said that 50% of marriages are ending in divorce now. Let's first start by like saying how young we were married and then give both of our points of view. What we thought about getting married that young, if we have any regrets or not? Tons. <laughs> well, I was 19 when we got married, so we got married three and a half years ago. And I feel like I definitely got a lot of questions asked of like, oh my gosh, like you literally just graduated high school like last year. Don't you want to know what you're going to do with your, with your life first? I always thought this is what I want to do with my life. Spend my life with my best friend. And we had sought counseling from people that we really cared about and loved and who loved us and who knew us. So I think finding people in your life who know you really well and can really help you make good decisions, especially when you're only 19 years old. Do you have any regrets? No. <laughs> when you know it's the person you want to marry, why not marry them? I guess you can say that we kind of grew up together while being married and I wouldn't trade that for anything. Just like comparing people's stories and I feel like ours is just very special to us. How were you? I was 22, right? <laughs> I always have to ask her how old I am. I originally thought I was gonna get married at 26. Wait, can I, hold on just a second. One of our second or third dates and I really wanted to talk about marriage because I was like, I don't wanna really date this guy unless like I'm actually gonna marry him which I already knew in my heart that I wanted to marry him, but I didn't know what he was thinking. And so we had kind of like brought it up and we were at a coffee shop. He's like, yeah, I don't really want to get married until I'm 26. And at the time he was 21 and we had already been best friends for like two years. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I was like, okay. But in my heart, I, I just like knew, I was like, I don't think that he's, I don't think he's going to make it that long. I'm going to make it that long? <laughs> Yeah, I probably wouldn't have made it that long. No, but I definitely thought I was gonna just have my career all set and everything before I got married. That's just not what God had for us. I wouldn't change a single thing. For sure. Uh, we'll just get into the five tips that we have. There's obviously a lot more. If you're not Christian, you might not agree with all of these. This is just what we have experienced and has worked for us in our marriage. Tip number one, we said communication. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Not really. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think communication is really important. Uh, whether that's sending a text that says like, hey, this is where I'm at, this is where I'm going. Maybe that's eating dinner together to just talk about your day. And you know, five minutes to just catch up and be on the same page with each other is really important. When I was in my teens and everything, I was not a good communicator at all. And so <laughs> I would just like literally just leave and go places and do things without like telling anyone. Which is probably not a good idea. Like if something were to happen to me, like no one would have ever known where I was or what I was doing. But I definitely had to learn like how to have good communication and like just tell Joe like, oh, like I got off work early just in case like what I was saying, like safety reasons. If something were to happen to me, no, it's not like nobody knows where I am or what I'm doing. Tip number two, I'm keeping God first. So at least speaking for myself, like I've definitely had an interesting journey with God I've never not believed in him, but I've definitely had like struggles. So for people that aren't believers, like we all just have to find our way to him, however that looks. So, um, but in our marriage, it's definitely the biggest thing is putting God first before each other. That looks like just um, spending time in the Bible and praying individually. So coming together and reading the Bible together and praying together every day. And that's one of the ways that we put God first. Like literally just whatever you're doing, do it with God. And like, you don't have mm -hmm. to like make it a super like legalistic thing. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to throw that in there. Especially for people that aren't believers that maybe stumbled on this video. And if you're still watching, like number three, community. So for us, our community is very like, based off of our church and our family and friends. But we do have a lot of friends that aren't believers too. And it's really important for me and Joe to like stay connected to those people not just because we want to like convert them to being believers or anything like that mm -hmm. like if you just become so isolated in the church and you never go out anywhere then like like what are we really doing 
all that to say, like, our community is a lot of, like, church friends and stuff, but there's a lot of it that isn't. Then along with the community, it just, like, comes with, like, having a servant heart to be, like, willing to serve your friends and your family and your church and just, like, doing that together. I think a lot of good things can come from that, just, like, building each other up in that way. Like, you do this really well for them or something like that. I think that helps a lot. Being accountable, too. Like, if something isn't, like super great like you have like I have guys to talk to and Joe has girls to talk to and sometimes it's just like having a friend that's not your spouse and like someone that also knows your situation mm -hmm. and wants the best for you too. Number four, trusting God. Again, if you're not a believer, I definitely can relate to like not trusting God. Like that's been one of my biggest struggles like being a Christian. There's always something new that is like hard to trust him, just trusting him is going to be big in a marriage just because like sometimes you don't really understand why your spouse is doing something the way they're doing it but if you just like trust God and just know that he like gave you the right person then you can work out anything especially if you're praying for your husband and wife like that helps with just like trusting the Lord is like you've prayed for this and now you're going to trust that he's going to work that out so. mm -hmm. number five just spend time together that seems like a no-brainer, but a lot of times we just get so busy, especially mm -hmm. in today's society, we get so busy. If we're not doing something, it's like equated to like not being productive. A lot of times we just need to like slow down and spend time with the person that we like really care about. It doesn't even have to be like some expensive like vacation or getaway or like even expensive dinner. Like even just making sure that you have dinner together, even just going out and like doing errands together and mm -hmm. like or we'll really go for a walk around the neighborhood for 10 or 20 minutes, mm -hmm. breaking up the day and the busyness of life to just spend time together. So that was already five, but we have a couple bonus ones. No roles for working or house stuff. Like I'll let you say breadwinner, homemaker type thing. Different seasons allow for different opportunities. Like Daniel's working, a, like this last summer, he worked a lot of hours and I didn't necessarily work as many hours as he did, so I cooked a little bit more or cleaned around the house a little bit more and right now it's flip-flopped. I'm spending more hours at work and he's spending more hours at home. So like when I come home, the laundry's done, dinner's made, lunch is made, all the things bills and stuff usually you hear of like the man taking care of like making sure bills go out on time and all this stuff but I like deadlines and I like meeting deadlines and I my brain just works well that way I don't really like doing laundry he does like 95% of the laundry I don't really like cooking he does like 90% of the cooking but I like baking he doesn't necessarily like baking so just going back and forth on what works best in different seasons is really helpful and not putting any labels like oh well you do all the cooking or you do all the cleaning, or well, I worked this many hours this week, so you have to do all this. Just like talk about it and be like, hey, could you throw the laundry in while I'm at work? Hey, could you make dinner because I'm running late? Stuff like that. That was really long. <laughs> <laughs> do you have anything to add? Because <laughs> then someone doesn't feel like they have a hundred burdens and they have zero burdens. They're both just team players. It's obviously easier said than done, but all these things we're still working on. Just notice that like when we're doing well in all these areas, our marriage is a lot better. Um, and then the last bonus one is have separate goals and together. I think this one's really important. We've been learning this recently. It's just really important to always be working on yourself so that you're never growing and your partner's just like growing more as a person. And then you just get stuck behind as far as like not maturing or um, just not bettering yourself overall, but then also just having goals together so that you're always like working as a team and something, mm -hmm. dreaming together, I think is really important. For sure. That's it? I don't know no, what else okay. to say. I feel like you covered it all. <laughs> My main man, Danny, right here. Do you want to end us? Yeah, I don't. Do you want to end us? <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst thing to say on a marriage video. Anyway, we got married young. We look like we're five years old. We're just enjoying life together. What can I say? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> also, laugh a lot. <laughs> okay, see you next week. Oh, end it. Ooh. I like to be educated, but I'm so frustrated. Hello to my love.